I needed before I even stepped in high school, you know what I mean? Stuff that I wasn't all the way, you know, I wasn't all the way sharp, you know? Right, exactly. Like, that right. Year, you know, that year before, that, that last year of Bantamway is when you, when you sharpen up, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was basically giving that up to go play high school, even though I would have learned a lot. I feel like I, I, I'm glad I went back and did it the way I did, though. I got you. That's a clean one, boy. Yeah. 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 What's going on, everybody? This is MVP Most Value Podcast, a podcast embracing the American football culture. I'm Terrence Owens, aka TO, and this is the Veal Edition. You know, Soup was on here. You know, um, you, you saw that episode. Soup talked about that he wanted to, you know, he was a freshman playing on varsity and he wanted to be like, you know, with the guys on JV playing in the cage, you know, the cage, the locker room. So a lot of guys don't necessarily know what the cage is because my freshman year, like my sophomore year, we got rid of the cages. So like in my freshman year, it was like one year with the cage. So I, I was like the one of the last classes to experience it. You know what I mean? So, so my question is, yeah. So my question is, just just talk a little bit, like how, like again, that tradition. Talk about like how 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 big um, was the cage? You know, that locker room. Oh, the cage! The cage is where it went down. That's Mm -hmm. where you you see transition. You know what I mean? When you're young, you in that JV cage. It's a jungle over there. Yeah. You feel me? That that horse cage was luxury. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. you get over there. That's what you were trying to get. See, when I first started off, like that ninth grade year. I'm in that JB cage with my friends and, you know what I mean? My whole mindset is to get over there. You feel yeah. me? So by going back to the Bulldogs, I, I I came right back to that Bars cage. So when I'm looking like, damn, I would have been there last year. So, it, I mean, it's a great experience because you get to see people transition. Like, people go from there to over there to be stars. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're over here fighting. It's a, it's a jungle. You don't know where you're going to go. You know what I mean? Some people make Some people transfer. Some people, you know what I mean? But the people who do buy into the program and make it over there, that, that, that's where you get your stars. Your, exactly. Your, your, exactly. Your, Tyler, your Pierre Wood, your Dante Whitner, your, you know what I mean? It, the list goes on and on. It de- definitely, most definitely, man, because I, I just thought it was interesting because I was thinking like, damn, man, really a lot of a lot of guys really ain't never even experienced the cage or don't even know about it. So I thought that I thought you know for the veal, especially for the veal talk, like that's that's really important though, like to have that that conversation about you know the cage though. That that's really that's really important. Also, Timmy C, talk to me about um that walk. You know, sometimes you know we play that obviously our, our um home field was at PH Bump Taylor, whatever you want to call it. You know, um, we used to walk through the field sometimes by twos, and sometimes I don't know if y'all did this. I want to ask you: Did y'all ever walk down Gray and walk on the hundred twentieth to the field? No, we never did that. Ooh, we walked. Oh, okay, okay. That I wa- sounds like a team walk. Hey, hey, brisk, hey, brisk. hey, just know, just know, we took that walk before, and that that, that was a that, that was real memorable. Just because you know we used to always walk through the field. So, but to see, you know, we you know we on gray, you know that you know the street, bro. Just to see people pulling up, you know, just you know seeing us, just right. It, it was a great experience. I just thought that you, um, you know, your class or your time at the field, y'all ever did that? I w- I was very curious about that. No, we did the regular walk though, but that walk, like I said, that walk is memorable. You walk, you you you, you just you in uniform, you you, you you get focused, you feel me? And my, one of the coaches might be saying something. That walk, you just so militant, and you just focusing on something, you envisioning what's going on. Mm-hmm. It's like I, I I got chills thinking about that walk. Right, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> most definitely. Hey, though, know, what was your best game that you can think of? Because again, like I know I know the view, I know the culture, like we. Everybody ball out. Everybody have, you know, great games, 100-yard-plus games. So, like, what was the most memorable game for you that you just that you just went off and you was like, I'm that guy, for real? What was that game for you? Uh, Senate, it could be I Senate. Went. It could be, you know, playoffs. That doesn't matter, like, the you know what I mean, the team. I got to go. I got to go big game because Senate, we're going to do the do. You know what I mean? You're right. You're right. You're right. That's the highlight reel, the Senate. I would have to say I hate to say this game because we actually lost, mm-hmm. but I would have to say Warren Horton against Mario Manningham because it was so like we both was ranked high. Was that your uh, senior was, year? That was your senior year. Yeah, that was okay. my senior year. Okay. Uh, Mario Manningham, like I said, he was going off. He had mm-hmm. scored touchdown. I scored touchdown. He had come back and scored. You know what I mean? And by him being so highly touted, it was like 
we had to step our game up. So I'm basically like, you ain't about to outshine. You ain't about to outshine the bill, you know. Mm-hmm. But we ended up coming a little bit. But that's one of my best games. I think I had over 200 some yards rushing, three TDs. And we lost, like, last play of the game. I think he ran a Nunu back or something. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I I asked that because again, like you know, like when I was playing for the Titans, you know, I came to a lot of video games, and you know, I always saw you play, bro. You used to be going off, and like again, if we talk about best running backs, you know, that coming out of the Ville, I you definitely got to be, you know, you up there, you know, for real, or yeah. or not, or or up there, you you the one, you know what I mean, on some real talk, and I ain't right. being biased just because you know I know you close to you. I'm just I'm just speaking real facts right now, bro. Like you was really going off. Like real shit, <laughs> most, de- most definitely. But yeah, but but again, like I got got to ask this question though. Like who who had the best class of all time? Because your class, your senior year was um oh five, right? Like the oh four oh five class, right? So 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 your class was always all in this talk as well. Again, you know, I I say our um, our Vellum senior year, you know, the 06 class was smaller, you know, fish bait like they. Yeah, I don't- Came up under me, right? Yeah, up under exactly, me. exactly. Because because they, they 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 were playing when you when you, your senior year. So Correct. right. So when, when people name my class, they are key names that come up in, in, when you name my class. See, see, that's why the question is so raw because you literally say a class, but that team sometimes have underclassmen. Yeah. Like well, my senior class, we had Debbie Dev. Fishbait, Smalley, they even Gino. Gino was in the tenth grade. He was a yeah. he, you know. So when you name my team, yes, it's my our senior class, Freddie Lennox. Yeah, like I can go on and on, but I would have to. I ain't gonna lie, my the best class, and I'm only saying this because these who I looked up to. Okay, okay. That class, Jeff Woods and Frank Nitty and uh, Tommy Murray and. That class was ridiculous because I think that's the class that actually went down there and won that game in Shaker, the game that made me want to go to – I think Soup was an underclassman at that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Peter Woods might have been a senior. Okay. Uh, but that class, like, I, that was the first time you ever even heard of a Senate team going, you know, that far. I got you. Know you. What I mean, or even or, – or even – even they they actually made the reason why we all migrated and went there because that was the start of it. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. I was at the where I could have went anywhere. I could have went to Ed's. I could have went to Nations. I could have went to uh, Lutheran. Anywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But that that that, you, that that was the first time I heard of all those athletes going to college. You know what I mean? Okay. That's what I like. I want to go to college for free. That's what they're doing at that. I'm going there. You know okay. what I mean? So I was at that class and uh, like you said, that class. After me was raw because even though they added new people like Milligan, Milligan, uh, nice. yeah, and then Bruce was he played with me, but he couldn't play because he was someone wrong with his transcript and stuff. That year they were ridiculous. That year, Fish mm-hmm. Bay, Marley, uh, Milligan, Debbie Dale senior year, yeah, yeah that class. class. And then you can't forget about the team who went to the state championship. Yeah. I think that was Yoda. Right? No, that was Cordell, Cordell class. Cordell, yeah, yeah, Cordell year. Yeah. Cordell year. Yep. They, 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 went to the, they went to the dance. We made it the game before the dance. They went to the dance. Yeah. I got them in there, and they were star-studded. You know what I mean? They didn't even, you don't. It's hard to make it there, to, to, to at least make it there, and they did that, so. Yeah, you're right. You're right, would, about, you're right about that. You're right about that. So, so I, go ahead. Go ahead. I would have to go with them team. And number one, though, would have to be that uh, – that thing mm-hmm. was soup un- underclassmen year, like so, they so, were ridiculous. So, so the, that that was um, Pierre Woods' um, senior senior year, you would say. So, yep. and, and you only saying that because, for an example, like you said, uh, you looked up to those guys. Also, you saying that because they basically started that, you know, that transition where everybody started, you know, coming there or you know that winning, basically that oh, no. winning season. What what, what you saying? And not only it changed everything. You know, what I mean, that was mm-hmm. it changed everything. That's when we were literally known for getting people in school. Okay. Everybody was coming there, be a part of that culture. Like they did it. Like like I said, I was in the eighth grade, and I can still think about being in the stands with my little red and black jacket on. Yeah, and I'm just like, man, what is this? Like, you know, what I mean, that tradition. I got you. They were it. I got you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I um, I got another question for you. 
um, did did you go on the tour, like the um, you know, the bus tour? Yeah. So, so yes, I did. We were- how how was it? how was it when you was there? Because because I I know for an example, let's say when like when Dante, let's say Dante Troy or, or you know that that class I should say um was when like Gian started the tour like in his van and then you know it, it evolved into like the you know the the tour buses. So like tell right. tell me your experience of the tour. Right in the middle. Okay. 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 <laughs> It was right after the van. Okay. So now we are getting little, not a, not buses yet, but we are start going deeper. So we would get a, like a, not a minivan, but one of those 16 passengers. Yeah, yeah. I got you know, what you're talking about. Taking on the road. So we was, I caught the middle. Mm-hmm. I caught not as big as the bus, but not as small as the van. You I know what I mean? So, <laughs> all the middle, you know? And, that, and that's one thing you can't forget either because you're going around the world, you're seeing different coaches. You just get so much exposure, like mm-hmm. that. That that was a time of my life. I, I can go back and think about just going in the Ohio State locker room. You know, as a kid, you grow up and you think about coming here and playing here, and now you seeing it. You hands on with the fans and the coaches and at every school you name, Michigan, any big school you can think of. As a kid, looking up, growing into, we went there and competed at those camps on that tour, and I I will be forever loyal and happy to even experience those moments yeah most definitely absolutely man same same here man um again i, w- I want to transition over to coach gann a little bit because you know for a lot of people coach gann was responsible and still is you know responsible for a lot of guys going to school he's a huge influence in a lot of people's lives you know yours mine's you know damn near the whole city of cleveland that's why he the godfather you know what i mean of cleveland so so how how has gann you know impacted you like you know at the time let's say from eighth grade to 12th grade and even to this day you know uh again is powerful he instilled skills in me that i still use today mm-hmm. like just being accountable you know what i mean just uh being accountable for yourself because self-accountability when you're accountable it makes everybody else fall in suit and they be accountable you know what i mean but mm-hmm. if you're not accountable blaming somebody else for something you know what i mean then everybody pointing the finger Right. And he taught me that, taught me um, work ethic, just taught me a lot of good skills, you know, at a young age that still carry on to this day. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, I I moved in with him. I lived with him. Me, Ted, <laughs> and we, we were roommates. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, I got it all day. You know what I mean? Whether it's just not just football, like, we're just life. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. one thing. How Everybody thinking so much about football. He teach you stuff, like, that you need to know in life as a man, you know what I mean? And when you got stuff like that, you can take it forever. It ain't just with football because I haven't played football in years and these still skills to this day that I use every day. You know? mm-hmm. Most definitely. Get, get, give me a, uh, I, and I know it's a mini, and it's probably hard to think about like, you know, just, just on the spot, but just give me like a, a, a good funny, a funny moment again, like a time. Like I told, I told Cordell, I had Cordell, um, you know, on the show as well. I told him that I, I saw again trip on the sideline. I forgot who he was playing. You know, he was walking and he tripped though. It, it you know, something silly, but it was just like I, I think I will never forget that, bro. It was just the funniest shit ever. He caught me laughing. You know, he caught me laughing at him. So that's why it was funny though. So, so you give me a moment, like give give me something you could think of that was real funny, bro. Uh, my funniest moment, him, he, you know, I, he was real hard on me at being a running back. Mm-hmm. So when I would miss the hole or miss a cutback, he would call me a dumb bat. And I thought everybody that was so funny. So people, I catch one of my friends in the hole and they'd be like, dumb bat. And I'm like, man, you got to be a dumb bat, but that was just a word for me. Like if I miss a cut or it could have been an easy touchdown, he'd be like, what you doing, dumb bat? He right, called right. me a dumb bat. I'm a dumb bat. I just scored three, four touchdowns, huh? <laughs> right, right. I just one cut. So that's one of my moments I always teasing when I say, like, man, you know, call me. Because, you know, he say something now, like, yeah, you were my guy. But that again, I was a dumb bat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, man, so so that's, that's all I got for you, man. I appreciate you, man, here joining me on MVP, man, taking the time out, man. You know, it really means a lot. Because, like I told you before, you know, the time difference, you know, it's a six-hour time difference. So, you know, to be able to hop on this call, man, I really do appreciate it. No, man, I appreciate you, man, for even thinking about me and having me on the show. I, every time I watch him, I'm like, get my thoughts and get my my mind together. Like, oh, I'm going to be ready. I got but still, you. I still wasn't ready. It's like, hey, you never know. <laughs> so what direction you going to go with it? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and 
And again, I, I appreciate you, you know, watching and supporting, man. And again, this is Veal Talk. So, again, re real and raw conversations, man, talking about neighborhood talk, man, bringing it back to the Veal, bro. I appreciate you. I'm gonna keep for sure, man. That's my brother. And I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep you I'm gonna keep you um you know updated with everything. Okay, for sure. All right, I'll make sure I post. All right, I'll, for sure, my dog. I'll talk to you soon. All right, right now. All right.